everyone and welcome to another stream. Today we're looking at satanic panic material from the 1980s. It's gonna be good. Found some good stuff including a baby Bob Larson in an actual entertaining video, believe it or not. <laughs> What's humping? Not much. What's humping with you, chat? 75% to level 1 in a hype train. Um, let's see... Uh, Annie McKean with 19 months is happy Saturday, all. Happy Saturday to you. Mr. Blast, thanks for 35 months. Aldred Undying with 18 months. This sub-baby's name is going to be Asmodeus Cornwall. Asmodeus Cornwall. Stone Corbell, thanks for gifting a sub. Hello, Dr. Baja. How's it going? Nice 110 stream streak. Impressive. Most impressive. <laughs> Um, and we are on a hype train, 0% to level 2. Heck yeah. Um, if you're on YouTube, how you doing? Uh, like the stream, I'd appreciate it. And I think we can just jump into stuff. Why not? Why not? Let me turn that music off real quick. And, uh, we'll be good. Hmm. Which one did I want to watch first? How about this one? Moira Soma, thanks for gifting five tier one subs. That's very generous of you. Overthought, thanks for gifting a sub. Mr. Blast, thanks for 300 bits. Um, Dillis Filler says, let's get this train to Albuquerque. All I know about Albuquerque is they have meth, and Bugs Bunny was supposed to take a left there. During the past decade, an epidemic of ritual crime has swept our nation at an alarming rate. Law-abiding citizens report satanic crimes in every state, and the number of cases investigated by police continues to rise. That's staged, but I'm going to skip it just in case Twitch decides to be strict. <laughs> H. Baird with 100 bits says, Choo Choo, thank you. The FBI's 1988 uniform... Um, I have seen conspiracy theorists say that the end is near due to the earthquake, yes. Crime so that is a thing. More than 18,000 murder investigations during that year, and 26% of those murders were listed as bizarre or ritualistic. <laughs> That's a little vague, isn't it? This murder was, checks box, bizarre. <laughs> I like that in the 80s, if you were, like, a cop that was really bad at their job, you could just be like, Satanists must have done it. Uh, I'm not bad at my job. It was... Witches? <laughs> this was not that long ago. In that same year, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children listed more than 9,000 unresolved cases of missing children. Most cases of missing children, the children are taken by the non-custodial parent. So this is a misleading statistic at best, an outright lie in purpose. The National Clearinghouse on Satanic Crime in America estimates 50%... The National Clearinghouse on Satanic Crime? You just said those words like it's a thing. Of the cases of what an insane country we live in. <laughs> Missing children and bizarre murders may be linked directly to satanic and other occult organizations. It is common for these groups to kidnap their victims, usually infants and young children, from hospitals, orphanages, shopping centers, or off the streets. I like that they can just say stuff. They can just say stuff with no citation, and then you're supposed to be like, yep, that's definitely a true fact. You nailed it. How do we know? Feels true. <laughs> Others live and die without a trace. <laughs> Paladin's Fury, thanks for 24 months. Happy second anniversary. Trace. 46% to level 3 on the hype train. This is because some children are born to cult members and later killed, so there are no records of their births or deaths. Wow, that's convenient. We can just say they're missing because there's no evidence they ever existed, so you can't prove they didn't get kidnapped and murdered. Checkmate non-believers in evil satanic cults. 
Inmate interviews conducted by Professor Al Carlisle of the Utah State Prison System show that lawbreakers are heavily involved in the occult. There may be as many as 60,000 human sacrifices per year in this country. According <laughs> To professor. In fairness, he did say there may be as many as a thousand, which legally speaking is a non-statement. <laughs> there may be as many. There may be as few as zero. Who knows, really? Nemesaur, thank you for gifting 20 tier 1 subs. Absolutely killing this level of the hype train. Have you done this ritualistically, Nemesaur? Do we need to chalk this down as a quote-unquote bizarre murder? Or is this one of the normal ones? Carlisle, and there is a distinct correlation, he says, with these human sacrifices and the high number of missing persons. It's a distinct this correlation, not just a correlation. This one's distinct. BM Trey, thank you for gifting five tier one subs. Thank you. This is because some satanic groups dispose of their victim by dismembering the body and cremating the remains, eliminating any possibilities for a That's That's how you do it. That's how you, yep, you can just cremate a body right there on an open bonfire. That's exactly how that works. Identification. Members of satanic and occult groups come from all walks of life. Many are highly intelligent individuals. Michael A. Aquino, senior initiate and founder of the Temple of Set in San Francisco, is also a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army Reserve. He's received a top secret security clearance to attend the National Defense University in Washington, D.C. Phoenix Leftist, thanks for gifting five tier one subs. 53% to level six. It's been a while, but in case anyone forgot the rule, I don't expect this to happen, but I do just want to iterate the rule. At level 10, we get a costume day. Or if we fill the tip bar. Founder of the Church of Satan was once a circus lion tamer. These charismatic leaders, and many like them, seek out others who have a high degree of intelligence. Some cult leaders prey upon emotionally unstable people. Examples are Jim Jones of the Guyana Massacre and Charles Manson. With his Manson family, he created a reign of terror and death. Unsuspecting young people are drawn to the occult because of various influences, including breakdown of the family unit, lack of closeness, negative lifestyles, self-centeredness, and a me-oriented society full of throwaway and latchkey kids. Wow, the 1980s being concerned about a self-centered me society is pretty ironic. <laughs> Adolescents are ripe for satanic or occult involvement because of their maturing nature and developing sexuality. They feel a need to belong to a peer group structure, to be accepted or identified, and stand out among their associates and friends. Boy, should I join the football team? Should I go out for track and field? Or kidnap a cat and ritualistically slaughter it on the full moon? So many choices for the modern 80s youth. Teenagers also tend to be impatient. They desire quick answers and the ability to cause instant changes. This eventually leads to rebellion against parental authority and social standards. Some young people are attracted to the occult by seemingly harmless pleasures, such as games and music. We should have a satanic panic bingo card, and Dungeons and Dragons would have to be the free space. <laughs> there they are! They start by participating in fantasy role-playing games, like Dungeons mm. and Dragons. But da -da -da -da, don't want to get copyright struck! Free metal groups flaunt satanic satanic messages. Morality and Slayer. Ozent Members of satanic or occult groups share common traits, such as an interest in old occultic forms of religion and worship. The desire to perform certain bizarre. Lilac Rosenberg with 125 bits and some TikTok links. A part one. At two. school, I bumped into this one kid and he told me, hey, we should hang out. It's just me and my brothers. So I started going to his house and. That is incredibly loud. I apologize. Which might have similar issues. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, good. It I saved the volume that time. Bizarre <laughs> acts that society condemns. A belief in the ability to control magic for personal... Dis ...commanded of them. 
and the access to perform perverted sex acts, such as homosexuality, bisexuality, sodomy, bestiality, and necrophilia. And the access to perform perverted sex acts, such as homosexuality, bisexuality, sodomy, bestiality, and necrophilia. Not all Three out of five or occultic bad. groups engage in illegal activities. However, many do, and some of their criminal acts include trespassing, vandalism, burglary, animal mutilations, trafficking, and selling of illegal drugs. I really appreciate it, everyone. All of these acts are carried out in the name of Satan. Therefore, the participants have no remorse after having committed them. <laughs> I eat this extra piece of chocolate cake in the name of Satan. Now I don't have to feel bad later. The satanic philosophy teaches... This is actually what you are obligated to look like if you're in a satanic church. The porn stash is part of the uniform. So just a warning. I think that's the real danger here. That personal pleasure is the ultimate achievement, even at the expense of others. There are four different symbols which refer to the mark of the beast, or Satan. Three sixes in a row. Three sixes facing inward of each other. Three Fs in a row, F being the sixth letter of the alphabet. Also <laughs> that one hasn't stuck around. I've not heard that one. So, three circles interlinked with each other. The sign of the horns is a hand signal given among members of the occult. Teenagers who flock to heavy metal concerts flash this sign often. The swastika, or broken cross, originally represented the four winds, four seasons, and the four points of the compass. Today, Satanists use it to symbolize the elements of nature turning against itself Do to the... create a world out of harmony. Pretty sure it's just neo-Nazis. The upside-down cross. Pretty sure you're just thinking of neo-Nazis doing neo-Nazi stuff. This is a blaspheme of the Christian cross. This symbol is often found at satanic ritual sites. Captain Squid says that's pretty metal. And at schools and churches which have been vandalized and desecrated. An upside down cross is a St. Peter's cross. It has been used in occult like symbolism pop culturally. So some kids might have seen that and done it. Like you can get jewelry and stuff that's like goth that's like the St. Peter's cross. But it is originally a Catholic symbol. The Cross of Confusion is an ancient Roman symbol. This is going to sound really stupid. Um, is the question mark Roman? Because that, it's the Cross of Confusion and it kind of looks like an upside down question mark. Does the question mark go back to Rome or is this just a lie or a coincidence? Or is my brain broken? Or any combination of those things questioning the existence or validity of Christianity. It is often seen on road signs and bridges. Can't you see this is a cross of confusion? As well as public buildings. The inverted pentagram, also called the Baphomet, represents two things. One, man's denial of God and acceptance of Satan. The other, the goat's head, which symbolizes man's lust for the flesh. Because when I think horny, I think goat head. Sometimes you may see the goat's head superimposed within the pentagram. The hexagon, also referred to as the seal of Solomon, is frequently used by many young people in the occult world. A triangle may vary in size, but it is generally inscribed on the ground and is the place where a demon would appear in conjured rituals. Oh, okay, so just any shape now. We're just saying basically any shape is satanic. I feel like this is a little broad. I don't think you get this many, like, generic geometric shapes. Hydrate. The circle symbolizes eternity and protection from evil. Other symbols of Satan are... Ah! Ah, yes. Clearly, this is some sort of satanic symbol. Mm-hmm. 
are the letters ACDC, which stand for Antichrist Devil Child. <laughs> This has got to be a parody. This has got to be a parody. There's no way. No, I'm. I totally got got. There's n zero chance that this is not a parody. Is this from that law enforcement guide one? No, the law enforcement guide one's a different one. This has to be a parody. There's zero chance that at any point they actually put that in a video. I don't. I don't think that that's. There's no way. Horns and tail added to any letter of the alphabet. A lightning bolt indicating heaven to hell strength. And occult numbers 3, 6, 9, and 13, which may also appear in Roman numeral form. I am the sayer of the law. Here come all that be new. It says it's actually for the Louisiana State Police. There's no way. Did they really think ACDC with a lightning bolt was referring to the Antichrist? To learn the law, say the words. Learn the law. Satanists and occultists celebrate several rituals and ceremonies each year. You should remember these important dates because they will coincide with numerous reports of abductions, missing persons, and ritual crimes. Sorry, I missed some bits messages. Captain Squid says, while well, we are on a highway to hell, Agebeard says to those about to be satanic, we salute you. In honor of ACDC, uh, every stream I do from now on will basically be the exact same stream, just sounding a little bit different, and I will get a different lead singer next time. I did it. I did the lowest common denominator joke about ACDC that everyone knows. We did it. To help determine if someone you know is drawn to Satanism, review these levels of satanic involvement. The fun and games level may include conversations, ego boosts, and possibly some initial interest in the subject. This level also includes the fantasy role-playing games, which could lead into the second level, referred to as the dabblers. A half-belief in Satanism or some serious interest. The shittiest time lord, the dabbler. It is at this second level where warning signs of satanic behavior may be apparent, such as a sudden, bitterly antagonistic attitude towards family and religion. <gasps> Gasp! A teenager having an antagonistic attitude towards their parents and, um, traditional beliefs held by their family? Gasp! That never happens ever in any society. A drastic decline in academic performance. A reclusive behavior pattern. And listening exclusively to heavy metal rock music. All Honestly, if you're the kind of kid whose parents watches this video, why wouldn't you be reclusive? The alternative is spending time with your batshit parents. <laughs> Most the point of, <laughs> of course they don't want to spend time with you. You're crazy! <laughs> more of these warning signs are evident. You should look further I've for seen ritual this items, such as a pentagram or other satanic symbols, black or red robes, a decorative dagger or knife, <laughs> a chalice or goblet, black candles, a personal diary with a black cover, which is called a book of shadows, That's and just copies of a diary, such as the satanic Bible and the satanic rituals, and possibly a small makeshift altar. Yeah, that's you that's his altar and definitely not his stash. <laughs> Discover <laughs> items such as these. Experts advise you contact your local law enforcement agency at once. <laughs> Hello, 911. My child is is not respecting me and is smoking in the 80s. Teenagers never smoked in the 80s. Please bring an officer here immediately to frighten my child, because I can't be a parent. <laughs> Joining a satanic or occult group will, in time, 
lead into the no turning back stage, usually involving criminal activities. People at this level believe that violent or criminal action is necessary to achieve their goals and are prone to violent crime. These highly destructive good, Satanists Bill, make you? families their primary targets. They believe that the breakdown of the family unit will guarantee the destruction of goodness, morality, and civilization. And that is when the nightmare begins for decent people everywhere. <laughs> for some, the nightmare is over. God, they again, I'm trying to be careful for Twitch. It's staged, crime. it's fake, but still. Overcoming this evil begins with every family. Parents must provide attention and love, protecting their children from corrupt influences, keeping the lines of communication open, and insisting on proper education. When this is accomplished, you can be confident that children will grow into happy, well-adjusted, and productive citizens, free from satanic and occultic influences. That kid grew up to be Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh, so there's one. That's pretty good. Their family were devil worshippers. There were satanic members, which is devil worship. Example of modern satanic panic, which unfortunately is still a thing. At school, I bumped into this one kid, and he told me, hey, we should hang out. It's just me and my brothers. So I started going to his house, and their family were devil worshippers. There were satanic members, which is... Yep, that's definitely a real thing that happens that you're not making up. Devil worship. I remember that they received... Hi, kid! Welcome to our house! We worship Satan! me with such love even more than the hood life right and and the dad was super nice and super sweet mom was like always catering to us food water they were read together not ordinary books though right satanic by it's a bit telling that the quality that he felt exemplified the best potential version of a hypothetical mom is that she provides like treats for the <laughs> children Overthought says, right-wingers want to act like breakdown of the family happens because of marginalized groups, but in reality, it's a generation of god-awful parenting. Bible and the book of... See my parents, who I haven't talked to in years because they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Fallen angels and read with them, with his arm on them, and I'm like, wow. And he started getting me more involved, and it made me want to go even more. And then it started... Like in the doors, or... Or, or on the windows or scratches and I'll get scared, right? Never experiencing things like that. And they'll be like, hey, it's okay. There are there are guardians. They protect us. Well, I got scared. Yeah, I know. They're letting oh, us. He's just like full on making shit up and probably stealing other people's videos that have nothing to do with what he's talking about. Know that they're here. This is some cynical shit. It, you should be scared when they don't let us know when they're here. And um, okay, so next day I told him, hey, what's up with these guardians? Who are they? These are angels in heaven. This downfall take us down and set its roots. And oh man, this is three parts. Oh God, it keeps 16, going. 16, I had my daughter and I said, I can't live this life no more. I told you. <sighs> hmm, let's go with this. They were beaten. There were several that had Bob Larson. I want to see which one I wanted to do. Yeah, this is the one. And oh. they would give themselves freely for this. My twin brother. Hold on, let me change the thing on my Twitch because I got to mark when something might be potentially graphic. Give me one sec so I can properly mark it. Hmm. Envy Vixen, thanks for a 30 stream streak, says, wow, 30 streams of Hannah. That's only one for each day in a 30-day month. Do, do, do. Cool. So that's... Stop being exploitative, Bob, you fuck...
Bob Larson's been doing this grift for years and decades. Ooh, there he is! He's killing it. He's absolutely killing it. Satanism. To most... Satanism. To most, it conjures images of medieval black masses or sinister deeds done for the devil. But simply said, Satanism is the belief that evil is excusable and attaining power to control people and circumstances is desirable. Whether you believe in a literal devil is not important in understanding Satanism's effect on our society. I think it is. The evidence is in. Satan worship and satanic cults are growing rapidly, and adherents of these ideas are becoming more vocal and more dangerous. These symbols of Satanism are turning up everywhere, on walls, on clothes. Where's on the fake priest garb? This is before he started doing that. I don't know why he started doing that at some point, but he did. Album covers, and even on bodies of murder victims. Law enforcement officials admit that satanic cults operate in nearly every community in America. Again, it's basically the cops just not wanting to do their fucking job. What did this crime? I don't know. Satanic fucking cults did it. Young children from Oregon to Massachusetts say they've been raped, tortured, and forced to watch small animals killed during satanic ceremonies. This is actually a problem, and this happened... Oh gosh, I have a book I've been reading about this, which spurred um, me doing this stream. During this period, there was a rash of um, therapists that would basically get into uh, memory, like recovery and regression therapy, which ended up, excuse me, just being an exercise in implanting false memories in people. And then once this idea of the satanic cult got into the public consciousness, there was basically a mass hysteria, right? So people were already primed for those narratives. It became a complete fucking shit show. Um, Stone Corbell says, That was pretty funny when he said the symbols of Satanism are appearing everywhere. Someone did the devil emote, or someone did the devil emote, and it floated right beside him on screen. H-Bird says they have to make sure that the Department of Bizarre Crimes is fully funded. School officials in many cities report high school students are forming satanic groups. A Chicago policeman told us satanic crime makes gang activity look like a nursery school. <laughs> During this program, you will see the many sides of Satanism. You'll be shocked. And you may be tempted to turn away in denial of such unspeakable horror. If you think I'm exaggerating, watch closely. There may be descriptions of terrible things happening if it makes you feel better. It wasn't actually satanic cults if these things happened at all. Just putting that out there. Listen to what is being done in the name of Satan. He'll save. Isn't it so nice that they immediately handed him? Also, people can just be mentally ill. That's a thing. California's death row after being convicted of 13 brutal murders. Ramirez often left satanic symbols at the scenes of his crimes, carving a pentagram on the body of one victim and on the bedroom wall of another. In his formal statement to the court at his death sentence hearing, Ramirez said, quote, Legions of the night, I will be avenged. Lucifer dwells within us all. In San Francisco, former waiter Clifford St. Joseph was found guilty of murdering a man during an apparent satanic ritual. The victim's body... What do you mean, apparent? Can you be a little more specific about the apparency of this? The body had all the signs. A pentagram had been carved in his chest. The body had been drained Ugh. of its blood. He'd been sexually abused. And one of his testicles had been cut off. That's unfortunate. In Dade County, Florida... Frank Fuster and his wife were convicted of ritually abusing children at the daycare center they operated in their home. Children at the center said the Fusters made them drink urine, eat feces, and engage in sex acts. Oh my god, was this one of the ones that was like, oh no. During preschool games, the case horrified the community. 
and the prosecutor called the Fuster's systematic abuse of the children, quote, outrageous. And in the longest trial in American history, children who attended the McMartin Preschool in Manhattan- Oh my god, the McMartin one's the one that was bullshit for sure, I know. Beach, California, told of seeing teachers in dark robes, watching small animals kill, playing sexual games, drinking blood, and eating feces. Yeah, this was the one that, like, we know is, like, a total bullshit. And it turned out to be the psychiatrist implanting fake shit. In a trial that many say was botched, none of the defendants was found guilty. But seven of the twelve jurors said they believed the children had been abused, and virtually every expert familiar with the case believes a satanic cult was operating out- No! Again. This is just lying. That's the worst part about propaganda like this, is if you're a person who's trusting of other people, if someone talks this confidently, you're like, oh, that's crazy that that happened, when in reality- ...admitted in the name of Satan, the most heartbreaking involved children. For young victims of Satanism, the joy of- The manipulation disgusts me. ...childhood gives way to pain, darkness, and fear. Sometimes that pain comes from strangers, sometimes from their own families. We've talked with a number of adults who tell stories of being raised in families where satanic rituals were part of everyday life. For many adults survive- You know, all those satanists growing up in... <laughs> See, if they were adults in this video, which was in 1990, they would have had to have been growing up satanists in, what, 1960s America? That makes sense. Childhoods were filled with torture, sexual abuse, cannibalism, and murder. Again, you can't just say shit. You can't just say shit. I was forced to help kill other children. I was forced to participate in their cannibalism. Esther grew up on the East Coast. Today, she lives thousands of miles away. But her childhood memories of bizarre... Sometimes it's people who, like, are more or less normative individuals that have the thing where memories are implanted in them. Sometimes I've seen this for people who have this thing where they are also mentally ill, like clearly maybe have schizophrenia or something. I'm not saying anyone in this specifically does, but I've seen the satanic panic people take advantage of those people and treat their stories a hundred percent like they're real with no evidence. It's pretty shitty. World, her parents were active members of their community, involved in church, school, organizations like Little League and Girl Scouts. But on the inside, behind closed doors, they and other members of their satanic cult forced Esther to endure repeated ritualistic attacks on her body and her mind. There was a circle, and I was put in the middle of the circle, and there was a fire around me. Um, and um, during that part, I was told I was being married to Satan and being the child of Satan forever and um, that kind of stuff. And then um, I was pulled out to the front of the circle beyond the fire and um, then raped by the men in the car. The next section's about sexual assault stuff, so I'm skipping that. Yeah, maybe it didn't happen. So that letting the world know that it's true, many of them know that that will never happen or it's a very good possibility in our lifetime that most people will not ever begin to believe that this is really going on. It's very important for them that they know that I believe them, that I know this happened to them, that I have no doubt that this happened to them. All right, this is one where we have backward writing. Dr. Walter Young is head of the unit that treats adult survivors at Columbine. One of the few in- Oh my God, we missed some shit. Okay, I'm assuming they're doing the whole bullshit thing and claiming that Columbine was a- Satanic thing? Uh, no. Patient units in the entire United States. Dr. Young has treated or consulted on about a hundred such cases. Today, he receives referrals from therapists throughout the country. I guess the thing that's most compelling to me as a clinician is to hear reports from a variety of patients who do not have contact with each other who report very similar stories and stories which are shocking and alarming. You're right, this is 1990. This would be too early for Columbine, so it must just happen to be in Columbine? 
Is that the name of the town also and not just the school? Or were they using people from the school? Or is it a coincidence? About uh, murder and sacrifice of human beings, cannibalism, uh, sexual promiscuity, um, in what appears to be a very ritualized, planned setting, uh, using not only children, both boys and girls, but adults as well. We also hear similarities uh, in reporting of being buried alive and then being unearthed and told that they've been reborn in the name of Satan. We have stories of people being married to Satan in marriage ceremonies. There are repeated reports of serial sexual assaults with the impregnation of a young adolescent and the destruction of that child, often by the mother itself, in the name of Satan. Satan, or the satanic panic stuff, um, <laughs> this sucks. Uh, a lot of it was a reaction to basically second wave feminism. Um, women entering the workforce and having the rights to, like, you know, have bank accounts and stuff like that. Since women were moving out of primarily and only at least being caregivers and into being more autonomous and having agency, people, and by people I mean usually reactionary religious folk, looked at this and were like, oh my god, and that anxiety found its way into the cultural zeitgeist via the satanic panic. So in these stories of like ritualistic torture and stuff, you'll notice they make time to within these narratives express it's the mom's fault. Oh, often the mothers are handing over their children to Satan. Oh, at this preschool, at this, at this, at this uh, daycare. Oh, if only these kids were at home being raised by their moms. But no, the moms are out at work, so they have to, you know, bring their kids to these strangers to be watched at daycare. You know, you get it. It's that kind of bullshit. Um, festering underneath the surface until it is either intentionally made a lie of in order to push certain, like, political positions, or people just start coming up with fantasies in their head because they're paranoid and anxious about a new thing and their worldview being challenged, so it comes out in unhealthy ways. More recently, we're beginning to hear more specific techniques of indoctrination and torture. Torture is very frequently used to, to one, strengthen the individual to maintain secrecy within the cult, that is intimidation. Uh, it's also uh, considered something to be desired by cult, that is to, the toleration of pain, the mixing of pain and sexual experiences and blurring the boundaries between them. But it's, quote, to make a good soldier for Satan. What we're dealing with at this point, my belief anyway, is a well-organized religious and cult-based group that is wide, wide, widespread. Myra Riddell is a private therapist and the driving force behind the Ritual Abuse Task Force of the Los Angeles County Women's Commission. Experts like Riddell are convinced Satanists can be found at every level of society. They are also convinced that the number of practicing Satanists is growing. According to Riddell, it's hard to get accurate information on satanic cults because they exert almost total control over their members and their young victims. Well, isn't it convenient that you can't find any evidence of these specters around every corner? Not a single one's coming out and giving you evidence. Oh my goodness, they're just that secretive. There are several purposes to this kind of control. One, it permits the rituals to go on with the complete cooperation of the individual who is, is being sacrificed in whatever way, whether it's being killed or, or, uh, or burned or sexually used for the ritual purposes. And the other is one that concerns many of us a great deal, and that is that these kids who are being this brainwashed are being inculcated into a belief in Satanism on a very basic unconscious level. We, in fact, and they, in fact, are trying to raise a whole generation of Satanists. <laughs> in the past... Just making shit up. Again, these satanic cults that they were claiming were everywhere did not exist. They were not real. And yet she's sitting here talking about them like it's something that could have been studied. It wasn't ever real. Just bonkers the way people talked with so much confidence about stuff they just made the fuck up. 
past. Satanic cults have maintained their membership by raising their own children within the cult. Oh my gosh, raising your child? First of all, again, not really a thing. But like, do you think it's illegal if someone was a Satanist to teach their kid their religion? Now experts see an alarm. Very strange. Army new trend. Survivors say that Satanic. Anonymous, thanks for gifting us up. Groups are establishing preschools and daycare centers for the sole purpose of recruiting vast numbers. Again, don't put your kids in preschool. Don't you dare go into the workforce. Your kid's gonna get murdered by a demon worshiper. Members of small children. We are hearing from those survivors that there is a deliberate and concerted and... Hbeard says they're indoctrinating those children at a deep level to be lifelong Satanists. That's us Christians' job. Well-organized, well-orchestrated effort to <clears throat> infiltrate the preschool system. And here's the spy shark. Psychologist Catherine Gould is known nationally for her work in treating ritually abused children. She's deeply disturbed that Satanists are preying on children at such an early age. The purpose is to For some of these psychiatrists, some of them may be doing it intentionally, either to push something or to get famous, but on some level I do wonder if any of it is accidental on the part of any of these therapists, like they themselves got caught up in the mass hysteria and accidentally started suggesting things that they were anxious about and unintentionally planted these seeds, you know what I mean? To achieve... Mandy, the Church of Satan isn't the same thing as this. The Church of Satan doesn't actually believe in Satan. This is a very, very different thing than these fictive satanic cults. An indoctrination at an early formative age when a child is going to the be... The Church of Satan does not actually believe in Satan. Most susceptible to being emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually hooked to the cult and hooked for life. The idea is that you get the child under the age of six, you abuse them, you indoctrinate them, you use them for cult purposes, you break them down, you strip them of any sense of free will, you strip them of any sense of connectedness to family or to positive, the positive parts of society, and you have a somebody who functions for the purposes of the cult. One parent who suspects that her daughter was the victim of satanic abuse at a preschool in Southern California. She had stomach aches, she had headaches, she um, would complain about various limbs hurting her, I mean screaming with pain, just absolutely screaming with pain. Um, night terrors, just horrible, horrible night terrors. She regressed from a three-year-old to a two-year-old and she was back in diapers. Finally, one day after being in school about six months, a little over six months, she had told my oldest daughter she was poked. And once that came out, I knew because of all the things that had been going on, I just knew in my heart that she had been molested. At first, Kenny assumed her daughter was the victim of sexual abuse. And I would imagine that's what happened and then a, something happened that got it into the kid's head that it was something else the therapist or whatever. That makes me really, really sad. She placed the little girl in therapy. Over many months, however, the real story began to unfold. Oh, that therapist is fucking dog shit. That makes me so mad. Kenny discovered that her daughter had been subjected to various forms of sexual and ritualistic abuse that paralleled activities common to satanic cults. Again, that didn't happen, most likely. What concerns me I talked about this with Peter. If you have trauma that isn't real, but it's delusional, you still experience that trauma the same as if it was real. We've talked about this with Peter. Like he said, he thinks he's been abducted by aliens, right? And harmed. In reality, we know, or we assume, at the very least, that he is experiencing night terrors, right? But it doesn't matter that that's the reality of the situation, because to Peter, as far as he's concerned, subjectively, he was abducted by aliens, and he's traumatized by that belief. So if you take a kid who's already probably gone through actual trauma in this case, and then on top of that, you convince this child that that abuse wasn't just that abuse, but it was even further, 
and worse things happened or just as bad things happened that expand upon that trauma, you are actively harming them. You are adding on to the pile of traumas that they are dealing with on top of the real. Now they feel all these fake ones that you had put in their head. That's so sick and sad. Six years later, her daughter is still haunted by fear. The most frightening stuff that is still with her is she believes she's being watched. Every red car and black car that goes by is watching her. Every lady that dresses in blue are kidnappers. They will kidnap kids. Wow, it's almost like someone is continually feeding her paranoid delusions about satanic cults hiding everywhere. Um, these are things that she's been told. She has... She literally just said the quiet part out loud. You're giving this child anxieties and fears and problems. Oh my god. As at, at one point, and as she continues in therapy, gets better and better, but at one point believed very much so that she was a child of Satan and that she actually had Satan's heart put into her. Dr. Roland Summit is a psychiatrist who treats child ritual abuse victims at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Being given drugs. Notice that uh, every time this is couched in children report, it is reported. Some say there's no evidence of any of this because it didn't fucking happen. Uh, which makes them feel sleepy, makes them forget. They're told they're going to have an operation. When they regain consciousness, they have what looks like a scar, which disappears, a kind of scratch on their skin. And they're told that wow, something... Wow, isn't is that really convenient that there's no physical evidence? They definitely get a scar, but the scar disappears, thus making it not a scar. It's been implanted inside of them. It may be a bomb, it may be the part of an animal that's been killed. And that will know if they're thinking about telling. And it will become armed and it will destroy them. So when children think about telling, and when they get nervous, there's a throbbing in their head, which they interpret as the bomb ready to go off, or a churning in their stomach, which may be the dog chewing at them. And from a child's point of view, they are now booby-trapped against telling. It seems that Satanists will use all sorts of elaborate and insidious schemes to keep their young victims under control. Consider the case of Ed Gellum, a Protestant minister, his wife, Mary Lou, and their son, Chip. Is that supposed to be a shot at Protestants? All three were convicted of sexually abusing children at the two preschools they operated in Roseburg, Oregon. The children told stories of ritualistic animal killings and sexual abuse with carrots, bottles, and sticks. Judge William Laswell, who prosecuted the Gallops when he was a district attorney, says the family intimidated their young victims by saying they had magic glasses capable of seeing into the children's homes. Chip, the youngest of the Gallops, had a pair of magic glasses, which is simply, or simply an oversized set of sunglasses you would buy at a carnival. Yeah, this is Satanist. The mother had a set, too, and the, and the father. And the children told us that Chip Gallop would get up on the stage put the glasses on, turn in the direction of where the child lived, and then make some observation about whether the child finished breakfast, put away his pajamas, uh, left some tracks on the, on the carpet. Uh, what would have happened is the children... Strange that they're framing this as a satanic crime and not a Christian one, because you explicitly said he's a Christian pastor. Would have called the family and, and learned something about what, what happened that morning. And so when Chip told them that he could see into their home and tell them something that they knew had happened, they believed that he, in fact, could see them and hear them wherever they were. And he had threatened to, to kill their parents and harm them if they talked. In addition, he'd given them, uh, most of them, a photograph of himself, which he asked to have displayed in their bedroom so that he was always looking at them that way too. Crimes committed in the name of Satan are beginning to receive... It wasn't in the, how was that in the name of Satan? You didn't even claim that that was satanic. What the fuck? You said he was a Protestant minister. How is that satanic? What are you talking about? Special attention by police officials. Several departments have established occult crime units and are learning to spot 
the evidence of satanic activity. A number of investigators are working to uncover the links between survivor stories and existing cults. Others are looking into the possibility of a national or international conspiracy involving satanic groups. There's much to be learned, and law enforcement officials are just beginning to scratch the surface. But across the country, police investigators agree a disturbing trend is emerging. The most vicious crimes being committed in the name of Satan are being perpetrated by young people in their teens. Pete Rowland and two other members of his satanic cult clubbed a fourth boy to death in the woods of rural Missouri. The group had been practicing satanic rites for years, torturing so many animals to death they lost oh. count of the number. They were obsessed with satanic books, gory movies, and heavy metal music. After the brutal murder, Roland said songs by the rock group Metallica drove him and his friends into a frenzy as they... Wow, a murderer tried to come up with explanations for why they murdered other than they just wanted to murder someone? I'm fucking shocked. That never happens. Planned the attack. Eddie Krigler, an Arkansas youth, claimed he was acting under direct orders from Satan when he beat his parents with a five-foot club, then stabbed them repeatedly with the same butcher knives he used to perform satanic rites. At the time of the attack, Krigler was recruiting other teenagers to form a satanic cult. In New Jersey, 14-year-old Tommy Sullivan stabbed his mother a dozen times with his Boy Scout knife. After that, Sullivan slit his own throat. Just weeks before the attack, he told a friend that Satan appeared. I find it interesting in this, like, instances where there actually are, like, things where they had writings about Satanism or stuff, and how it became almost a self-fulfilling prophecy throughout the Satanic Panic, that you had this narrative in society that there were these evil Satanists going around murdering people and hurting people all over the place. So if you are a youth growing up in that environment, and those are the narratives that are being fed to you, and let's say you're struggling with some sort of mental health issue where you're having thoughts that you know are bad, or you hear voices talking to you, or you have impulses that you know are wrong, or no society at least deems wrong, but you don't know what to do with that. You've already internalized the Satan, Satanists are everywhere thing, and now you are feeling things that you think are evil and associated with the Satanists culturally, so you feel a draw to look into that kind of thing, and you almost adopt the aesthetic. You adopt that identity, that fictive identity that society conjured out of its anxieties, and become the fictional thing. Not really. You're effectively LARPing as a fictional thing that society imagined, you know? But it is interesting how society is sort of funneling these kids into an identity slot... You know what I mean? That they have created artificially. All identity to some extent is artificial, but I mean like whole cloth. Society created this out of nothing, out of its anxieties, and then people with other anxieties slotted into that role. Or to him in a vision, ordering him to kill his family. Label theory detected? Okay, that's a word apparently. Good to know. For Ricky Casso, involvement in Satanism led to murder and suicide. Casso and his friends formed a cult called Knights of the Black Circle. One night, they turned on another team. Gary Lowers forced him to say, I love Satan, and gouged out his eyes before stabbing him to death. The day after he was arraigned... Oh, there's an ACDC shirt, and as we all learned, that's the Antichrist and Devil something. Castle hanged himself with a... Devil dinosaur. ...bedsheet. Satanism is on the rise, and it is the crime of the 90s. Randy Eamon is a police officer who spends much of his time investigating crimes that have links to the occult. Eamon believes the lure of Satanism is too powerful for many young people to resist. The danger of Satanism and the occult to society, I liken to a narcotic. It's addictive. Where's it's Moon Boy? He was ritualistically sacrificed to Satan. Power they're seeking. And when they find out that they toyed with a, a ritual, and that ritual worked, they're hooked. 
It's just like the hook in the side of the mouth as a fish. Hydrate. It takes it one step further, and pretty soon, the hook is not on the side of the mouth. They have swallowed it completely. And it is a magnet, and it is a magnet that they can't go away from. It just draws them further and further and further. And pretty soon, they're not going with just lightweight rituals. They're graduating from uh, candle rituals to wearing the, the, the costumes, uh, the, the regalia with the, the ritual swords. They're going to the black hoods, to the animal sacrifices, and where may that take them? To human sacrifice. Human sacrifice. That's how far Sean Sellers went. Label theory is a part of symbolic interactionalism I was telling you about the other day. Oh, cool. I need to go back to school. <laughs> Today, Sean is... Imagine what I could do with the right tools. <laughs> I could even be even more insufferable and long-winded. ...in solitary confinement on death row at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. Sean was just 15 years old when he was tried, convicted, and sentenced to death for three cold-blooded murders, including that of his mother and stepfather. Murders he committed in the name of Satan. Tragic, alarming, and nearly f Graham, we've heard from many victims of Satanism about tragic, alarming, and nearly fatal encounters with devil worship. We've listened to those who participated willingly and those who were victimized against their wills. We've heard reports of innocent children raised in a brutal environment of torture and teenagers who were compelled to commit crimes and to kill in the name of Satan. All these accounts could make us question our fundamental faith in the decency and goodwill of humanity. But what we've seen to be should Bob? compel us to act responsibly and address the root causes of this terrible malevolence in our midst. Satanism thrives on secrecy. Its existence depends on concealment. That's why the bravery of the people you've listened to during this program is so phenomenal. It will save others from the anguish they endured or committed. Think about the remarkable consistency in all these stories. Remember that many victims are still imprisoned by the fear that no one will help them, that no one will believe them. Oh yeah, it's Bob Larson. There he is. That's when he was a young man of but 50. I don't actually know how old he is here. Seduction of Satanism will end when you and I confront this national tragedy by marshalling the forces of our schools, churches, community organizations, law enforcement associations, and social agencies. We must expose all the evil being done in the name of Satan. I'm Bob Larson. And it was all because I thought that Satanism would promote me. I thought that Satanism was the ideal of self-preservation and would make me successful, would make me the person that I wanted to be. That's the biggest lie that I've ever seen. I really believe that survivors need to know that there's hope, that they can live through this. This Harold Elbowman with 40 Bit says, my homeroom teacher in high school was charged with this. Um, quote, sexy play with his Catholic elementary school kids in a largely Protestant town and threatening their silence by showing them something awful. This was in 98. I've read the case, and the only fact I know are that the story is sus AF. The man's closet is practically transparent. The Catholic archdiocese covered up any hints of wrongdoing, and he's been employed at my high school 25 years without issue, aside from meme-worthy levels of camp. Oh... This is my truth as I know it, and I know that I didn't make it up because I know I was there. I've told this story before, but um, in terms of things getting like covered up by a church, um, at the Baptist Elementary School I went to, it was like an open known thing that the pastor, who was like 50 at the time, had gotten a student who was 14 pregnant. It was known, and he, and I believe the church, ended up paying to relocate the family and to keep them quiet. Yeah. And I know that there will be people who will never believe it. It's very, very difficult to confront the reality of this, because once you confront the reality of this, you feel such a tremendous sense of responsibility to do something. Hmm. 
Is the stimulation of a child's sense of fun and fear all there is to Halloween? Or is there more? For many entrepreneurs... I get to wear slutty costumes. Halloween. That's a bonus. Tyson Bree with the $2 super chat says Satanic Panic equals um, West Memphis 3. Love your content. That sounds familiar, but for some reason I'm blinking. ...is big business, a major promotional event used to bring in billions of dollars worth of revenue. In addition to the usual costumes of cartoon characters for children, a growing number of outlets are featuring more macabre and sinister creations for purchase. This one well-known department store chain will sell more than half a billion dollars worth of Halloween paraphernalia this in business year-round as a result of the tremendous... Trophine Priestess says, in short, label theory is about how we create self-fulfilling sociological prophecies. The most obvious example is that a teacher is unlikely to be lenient with someone who is popularly regarded as a, quote, bad student. Thus, bad students are regarded as worse for making the same mistakes reinforcing the label. Vicious cycle ensues. Ah, makes sense. And the sales and rentals they receive during the Halloween rush. Farmers also view Halloween with an eye toward making big profits. Pumpkins are a traditional Halloween accessory used by households nationwide as jack-o'-lantern decorations. This one Southern California field of only 164 acres will yield nearly a quarter of a million dollars to its owner. Halloween is manipulated by the promoters of horror movies and videos as a major marketing opportunity. While horror films used to be synonymous with B movies, <laughs> corpse grinders. <laughs> when is that getting a vinegar syndrome release? That cover alone is glorious. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Movies and considered the com little shop. That's the Roger Corman one. This is from the like the fifties. It's inoffensive. It's also public domain. Conventional low budget industry standby. Today they account for near. Do, 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 do. Oh, behold my Halloween collection. Every single Halloween movie. From one to two to three to four to five to six to six, the producer's cut. H2O, Resurrection, the bad Rob Zombie ones, the recent trilogy. We did it. H Bird says, screw pumpkins. Ugh. Touch me and I'll cut your friend. What do I care? <laughs> Nearly 20% of all of the revenue received by feature film. Night of the Living Dead. Also public domain. Producers and distributors. The success of Freddy. the technical revolution in special effects from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 effects has attracted serious film directors to produce well-crafted, elaborate horror productions. Are they aware that the Nightmare on Elm Street films are not produced for little children? Like, it's for teenagers at youngest, really. A recent visit to the Video Software Dealers Association exhibition in Las Vegas showed that the two biggest selling artistic genres were pornography and horror. Woo! Collect one of those things. Hollywood is... I've not seen the black phone yet, no. ...continuing to capitalize on society's growing craving for the occult and... I have that one. I have that on 4K. ...and demonic. The irony is that, I have that, on 4K. that while these producers label such films as fun and make-believe, two things that are objectively true about them, many of them hire practicing witches or Satanists as technical advisors who in Oh my god, this one's a poster for the witches! This is a children's movie based on a Roald Dahl book. The kid turns into a mouse and has a little fucking adventure. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. This is a movie for children. It's a good, good kids movie. Fucked up for a kids movie, but appropriate. It's great. Would recommend. Show this to your children and scare them. Please. It's good. Ensure the authentic reproductions and performances of rituals, sacrifice. That's Hellraiser. Spells. Ooh, Night of the Demons. I have that one, too. 
the curses. I have all I have the first four Hellraisers on 4K. And then I have the next like three after that on Blu-ray. It's just an excuse for me to talk about my collection. Surprise! It's time to listen to my special interest for three hours. People like are are so hyper during the day. They need to come home and watch something that's like totally unreal, so they can release themselves from all the pressures. This is the sexiest man alive. I'll have you know, okay? Fact. It's just the type of thing that makes you laugh and forget about life. Unironically based. What a fucking Chad. Over the last two decades, most horror films have become far more graphic in their depictions of violence and cruelty. Movies of- Ooh, bloody birthday, I have that one. Affectionately known as splatter film. My cannibal collection is unfortunately bare. I have cannibal holocaust. I have cannibal apocalypse. I have jungle apocalypse, which is a cannibal movie. Karat says, my Catholic school banned Pokemon cards, effectively creating a black market for them. Prohibition rarely works. Cannibalism, <laughs> rape, and a host of other grotesque atrocities. Wait until they read the Bible. Well, we think it's pretty fun. A lot of people just like it because it's fun, it's wacko, it's not real, and so it's just the type of thing that people like to watch because you don't have to think reality when you watch it. When it comes to gore or splatter or any other particular genres. This guy looks like the slimiest movie producer of all time, though. I will unironically I'll, I'll I'll defend I'll defend the movie on that point. This guy looks like a scumbag. It looks like how do I put this? Or happened in that room and it became a person. And that's the vibe I get from this fucking guy. The justification lies in our Constitution. I don't feel anybody has the right to tell me what I can or cannot watch. Most of these films receive R ratings, which mean that children under 17 cannot have that one. Not view the film or rent the video without the accompaniment of an adult. Yet this precaution is seldom enforced. For 15 is the average age of those who see these films. I was younger than that when I started watching horror movies, and I turned out better than fine. I'm actually doing great, so. <laughs> turned into one of my main hobbies. Not just horror movies, but horror is one of my favorite genres. It's fine. While many producers claim that these gruesome spectaculars are merely fun, and not dangerous to the- Ooh, Blood Diner. Do I have Blood Diner? I don't have Blood Diner. Psyche of our youth. Many of the scenarios from the horror films are duplicated in copycat crimes, which make for sensation- Um, sure, I hate Twitch times too. If you send me a link, I'll take a look at some point. Well, headlines. I can't promise I'll watch it. Depends on how paranoid they are, or if they actually are being watched. Depends on a variety of factors, but I'll definitely take a look. Oh, it's, it's Bob again. Hi, Bob. Um, real quick, I have to urinate, so uh, I will return. Be cool. Everyone be cool. Thanks, I had Twitch time. Thank you. All right, guys. I saw a few people. Okay. Be right back.
return. Fear not. What's the music? Um, I was gifted a big thing of uh, royalty-free music, so I can't point you towards it because it's not like available on YouTube or Spotify or anywhere. It's literally like music you have to purchase. Teenagers across America are playing with a new and frightening game, Satanism. Are they? Are they, though? Their school books are marked up with satanic symbols, upside-down crosses, pentagrams, the number 666. Their fashion... Boy, and where did they learn any of these things? Was it on news reports like this one? ...glamorize the demonic. They are seduced by heavy metal heroes, many of whom feature satanic imagery in their songs and album covers. For some of these young people, the fixation... Imagine living in a decade where like 50% of the people were just the call for an uprising guy. <laughs> That's just like what half of people believe. On violence, evil, and death leads them to commit... <gasps> Gasp! <laughs> You're not allowed to say that, apparently. Otherwise, they'll, sh they'll, they'll put it on camera and frame it menacingly. Abominable crimes, including suicide, 19. Both raised in Mormon homes, drew blood from their own veins, and mutilated animals oh. in satanic rituals. But that Why they always got to show this? eventually killed 18-year-old Michelle Moore. Sean Sellers, 17, the young... Between Satanism and witchcraft, the two terms are usually lumped together as one. Satanism, as it stands, is basically a reversion and perversion of Christian symbolism. Whereas witchcraft, or Wicca as we prefer to call it, is a totally separate, autonomous organization that, that has its own form of worship, which is not related to Christianity in, in any way at all. When I first got into Wicca, it looked really good. It, 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 it seemed to be white and innocent and just going out and like gathering herbs and worshiping nature. But as I got into the higher degrees, I learned that the name of the horn god was Lucifer. <laughs> and I learned that, the, for instance, the sign of second degree was an inverted pentagram, which is, of course, the symbol of black magic, the five-pointed star turned with the two points up, symbolizing the horns of Satan. And I'm so curious, where do they think, like, the, 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 the first, like, source of this information is? Like, you might be able to find a first, like, thing that claimed this stuff, but, like, why do they believe this stuff is, like, real? It's so hard living in a world where so many people believe magic is real. I don't understand. Everything is confusing. And it dawned on me that there were things here that weren't quite as they should be. According to my Bible, witchcraft is witchcraft. God does not distinguish between black or white or gray. Uh, witchcraft allows you... Or Maybe that's a pretty out-of-date worldview that you should update. ...teaches you to depend on supernatural powers and spirits to get things that you want on this earth. So I believe that despite all the good that Wiccan think they do, their power source is exactly the same as that of Satanism. Many officials have been reluctant to admit the horrendous ramifications of satanic activity in America and Europe. That's loud. But despite opposition, some people have come forward and spoken against the upward swing of Satanism as a serious epidemic that must be considered. David Wilshire is one such person. As a British Member of Parliament, he actively... I'm curious what would happen if they claimed there was an epidemic of Satanism and in order to stop the demons from getting inside you, you had to wear a mask. 
kind of curious where the conspiracy theorists' loyalties would lie there. <laughs> That's his fellow countrymen to the growing dangers of Satanism. Once you open up the mind to the sorts of ideas and imagery and history of witchcraft, where is the dividing line between something which is a bit of a giggle and something which slips very readily uh, in, into full-blown Satanism, if that's the right phrase for it? Where... How would you unintentionally worship anything? Wouldn't intent be the primary recipe for worship? There are no bounds to how nastily and foully you treat other people for your own gratification. Englishman Alistair Crowley, a leading inspiration in today's revival of Satanism, was a bisexual. He also ate hot chip and lied. In his book Magic, he detailed the proper procedure for performing a child sacrifice. Crowley's powerful influence is seen in such groups as the OTO, Ordo Templi Orientis, and Colonel Michael Aquino's Temple of Set an offshoot from the Church of Satan. In 1966, Anton LaVey founded the first Church of Satan in San Francisco, which at one point claimed 10,000 members. Look at the outfit! <laughs> and they're like, this guy's very serious, and you should be afraid of him. Like, don't get me wrong, he was probably a hedonistic shit, and I don't know, he definitely seems like he would have gotten up to some fucked up shit. But, like, he's not working for Satan. He's an edgy boy. He's an edgy boy trying to be edgy. LeVay authored the Satanic Bible and Satanic Rituals, two of Satanism. Seems like he probably thought he was edgy and was very horny. Those are, like, the vibes I get from him. Most important books. Is that he fucked a lot and he thought he was edgy. Astonishingly, when the Satanic Bible was first published, it outsold the Holy Bible. It teaches tenets that are totally opposed to goodness, purity, and selfless behavior. All religions are coming around to Satanism. We're in. Shaman Farage. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Where do I find these videos? Are they on YouTube? But I also do have a lot of this stuff um, on physical media as like. I like having this stuff and having it archived. Like, I have ones that are um, by category. Here's one on social engineering. Here's one on religion. This one's patriotism. So, like, both? I often find them through stuff like this, um, but they're usually on YouTube. It's just easier than, like, ripping something. To the Satanist. Captain Squid says, Hail Satan, Rain Satan, Snow Satan. Good no sleep. is evil, and evil is good. The truth is a lie, and a lie is a truth. As above, so below. Sweet is bitter, and bitter is sweet. And everything is twisted around the other way. The As Hans would say, an invert. Satanists have merely followed the pantheist way of thought to its logical Remember conclusion. This if they're in the 1980s satanic panic, it was sort of shorthand for a slew of false accusations that children were involved in satanic rituals. Yeah, well, now the conspiracy is making a comeback online, and this is thanks to uh, groups like QAnon. You know that name. NBC News senior reporter Brandy Zdrozny covers extremism and the internet for us and joins us now. So, Brandy, in your one day I too wish to awkwardly look into the camera and spike the lens as they introduce me on some cringy day show. Republican prosecutor was running for re-election in Utah. He was the top prosecutor. He was pretty progressive. Um, some people labeled him soft on crime, um, but he was a, a upstanding Mormon guy, m pillar of the community. And what had happened was these old allegations made in the 90s and the early aughts were sort of brought up again by political foes, by someone who he was extraditing from another country and weaponized against him. These allegations are wild. They are, um, are very unlikely to be true. And um, unfortunately, what happened was that people got them in public records requests and spilled them all over the Internet. He had to come forward into his real life and say, neither I nor my wife, who is a professor at BYU, is, are doing these things, cannibalizing children, you know, murdering children, things too awful to even think about. And because of that, in part, he lost the election. Reason, uh, I heard that you're reporting that Astro World, the music festival last year, which is where 10 people were killed, is also involved in some of this conspiracy theory? Yeah, well, Kate, the thing is, is that now 
because of the internet, ferreting out Satan is now sort of a, that something terrible happens. It's that Satan is somehow involved in it and people are seeing symbols and somehow signs, piecing together parts of social media. And it's not just things like Astroworld, right? It can happen in any sort of situation. So we're seeing that sort of satanic labeling and piecing together clues happening in all sorts. Imagine of having to publicly declare that you do not eat children. Of, um, situations and events. If it, I'm asked, I'll simply say no comment. It's, it's pretty widespread. My now. business is no one else. Very disturbing. Brandy is Brandy Zadradny. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <sighs> Remember, everyone, only participate in vor with consenting adults. Absolute limits to what we go after. We believe in greed. We believe in selfishness. We believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man, because this is man's natural uh, feeling. And therefore, Satanists take that to its extreme and say, if I want to be to gain my way. Mm. Uh, there are generally four different groups Total of Satanists. Too bad, uh, we gross. would like to classify them as the, the dabbler. Then you have your religious Satanist. Then you have your non-traditional Satanist. And then your generational Satanist. The dabbler, we would classify as the teenager. The teenager would uh, simply... The Ouija board, very Satanic. Registered trademark of Parker Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> pick up a book and kind of do his own thing not real dangerous uh, but he can be moved to into further areas which could be criminal or dangerous in nature anton levey gives satanists a bad he gives you a bad name eh, that needs work but there's something in there there's something in there <laughs> up the escalating uh scale of types of satanists you see it in all videos from this time the dabbler the religious satanist etc i actually don't know um i'm in the middle of reading a book all about um the 80s and 90s satanic panic so if i find out i will let you know but i don't know off the top of my head up on walls knocking over tombstones and making a general nuisance of themselves in the public they are the ones also who will have i ever played monopoly satan was surely involved in that game <laughs> do the uh, animal sacrifices and they're really novices they're considered uh, lower level satan are uh, protected by law do and i get that cute little number that he's wearing because like i'm on board if i get that cape and like cute little little thing going on anton levey's first church of satan. i'd make it look better than him that's for sure satan in san francisco would be an example of that they are religious in their approach and they try not to violate any man-made laws because it is um not productive for their own self-interest. Now the non-traditional Satanist is a gentleman or lady or the group of people who would uh, take certain ideologies, develop a cult, usually polarized around some central theme, oftentimes taken from a biblical aspect, and uh, use that to uh, commit crimes, or they may not commit any crimes, but uh, for what we're talking about for these purposes, the non-traditional Satanist is oftentimes the most dangerous. How are they dangerous if they're not committing crimes? Like, what are they doing that you don't like? Like, just... Generational Satanists. These are people who would have Satanism in their family, and it's passed down from generation to generation, just as the name would... See, they, they have uh, learned all these things. They have been molested, forced to drink blood, eat feces, uh, urinated upon. The feces thing is a running theme, too. What's up with that? Why do all these fake stories have shit-eating? Did one of the therapists just watch, um, oh shit, I broke my own joke. What is it? Something or 120 Days of Sodom. Fuck, why am I blanking on the first title? Unsodomized and just from... It's in the Criterion Collection. Generation to generation. One of the two movies I own in the Criterion Collection where people eat shit on camera, which isn't... I could have done the doofenshmirtz thing there, but I didn't set it up well. I just real Sallow! Thank you. Sallow and Pink Flamingos. The two movies in the Criterion Collection that I own where someone eats shit on camera. Only one of them was real shit, though, so it's fine. It continues. Many Satanists recall being fascinated with occultism at a young age. And if anyone can tell me what that has to do with... this film then you win my respect then you win my respect it's not even that hard of a film trivia thing you'll get it 
Some had been ritually dedicated to Satan as children. One person who remembers being initiated by his grandfather is Glenn. One year at a family reunion, he took all the cousins, all the little kids, and he lined us all up in a row. And he went down the line, just one by one, putting his hand on our heads. And he came back and stopped it. Lucas Dawn gets it. Me. And he said, this is the chosen bear. one. Yep. After that, he took me aside into a barn where it was private. And he laid his hands on my head, and he said, at the moment of my death, I pass over all my power and my ability to you. I was uh, finally given the wonderful privilege of realizing that Satan was the god of the devil. The main teaching is that uh, and, uh, wrongfully... I think they're pretty clear that it's propaganda. I hate Twitch times, too. Um, thrown out of heaven when he asked for equal power along with Jehovah God and that one day he would regain his rightful place. Jehovah? Is this a Jehovah's Witnesses thing? Like I know not only Jehovah's Witnesses could theoretically call the Christian God Jehovah but like you know flag something for me. So we um, have to make his army bigger so the more recruits there are in um, Satanism and uh, the occult on the earth, the quicker his army would grow and then he would take over and overthrow Christ and uh, the Christian church. Now, worshiping of Satan is not a crime in the United States of America. It's pre Good. protected under the First Amendment. Therefore, if you see a group of people dancing around a fire... I know, H. Baird. I've seen that movie too. They're not committing any crime. There's nothing that, that the United States law enforcement can do. It's not against the law to be a, a Satanist or to be a member of, of a witchcraft group, you know, or to be a doorknob worshiper. I don't really care what you form a religion is. It kind of feels like you are. I don't investigate the religion. It's the crime I investigate. There are no statistics to prove uh, anywhere in the United States of America or the world that this stuff is widespread. He has an M preg thing with demons. Who doesn't? But it's my opinion that it's more widespread than you can shake a stick at. Satanism in the United Kingdom is on the increase. It is Demons are the sexiest monster. I believe one of the fastest as a scientific fact growing religions as it is legally known in this country. In Britain we are beginning to see that Satanism is widespread. From the contacts we have through social services, voluntary agencies and the police, we are beginning to monitor the situation, therefore developing a picture which is showing that we have a very serious problem. The real Satanists, the hardcore Satanists, are involved in criminal activity, and for that reason they are going to try and look as normal as possible, the better to be able to deceive you. There are doctors, there are lawyers, there are teachers, there are Oftentimes, everyone around you is suspect. Always be paranoid all the time. People who are in positions of great influence over small children. Priests, ministers, doctors, police officers. H. Baird says, are there police units that deal with child abandonment due to queer kids getting thrown out of their houses? No. Sounds like religious matter, religious matter, religion matters just a smidge. Yeah, no kidding. Judges, uh, businessmen, oilmen, Teenagers are all linked together for one purpose, to sacrifice whatever they want to Satan. It would be a whole lot easier if these people wore, you know, a, had horns and a pitchfork and a red suit, but they just don't. They could be your next door neighbor. I know when I was involved in the Church of Satan, they were very proud of the fact that there was not a single military installation in the world that did not have a outpost of avowed Satanists. Uh, Satanists are drawn to the military because of the idea of war and death. <laughs> and as we all know, all wars throughout history have been started by Satanists, and no one else, no one else starts wars. Christians have never started a war. Shut your mouth. You're going to answer to the Coca-Cola Corporation. You see, they view war as one gigantic human sacrifice. Satan as opposed to us, who fight over resources smarter. Satanism we are finding is becoming international and interconnected. They are interconnected in a lot of finance 
And this finance is made through pornographic videos, through drugs and through arms. As far as the attraction, I mean, what, what actually would make somebody become a Satanist? Well, for some people, in my case at least, it was a gradual infiltration. It was a move from things like ESP. I'm sorry, what are those glasses and where can I buy them? And flying saucers. Oh, the goddamn Rosicrucians. That was a shame. And then just a very gradual, many year slide into finally regarding Satan as my God. I got into Satanism simply because of the promise of power and wealth. And by being invited to some parties which I went to, I was told I could have those things, but it was a, a special gift that I couldn't have until I had been initiated. I think it can be put in one four-letter word, lust. And I don't just mean sexual lust. There, there is a, a lust for power that is part of our sinful that's nature. That's an illustration. There is a lust, we'll say that's of course, fine. for sexuality. Spiritual itch to want to somehow reach into the unknown. We're fascinated by it. As a young boy of 13, 14, I practice magic. When you're that age, there's no limit to your the scope of your imagination. And so... Zimbot from Futurama, but as a human. <laughs> and so, everything magical that we'd heard of, we tempted. Calling forth the devil, invoking demons. We tried all these things, and with some effects. In 1981, Mark's quest to experience the more powerful side of black magic led him to start his own satanic coven, the Temple of Olympus. What do you want? Magicians are people who get what they want. The main theme of devil worship follows along the teachings of Aleister Crowley, which is do what thou wilt. Didn't know you were involved. Do whatever you want to do. They, they cater to your needs to get you involved. They want the quick slick answers to a quickie. Hey, you up for a quick slick? Uh, whatever they need. Better because it rhymes. If you're not popular, you are told that certain rituals, compassion rituals, will gain you popularity or gain you prestige with the Look opposite good sex. And how are you doing? And this is something that they taught me um, how to kill someone, a spell, how to kill someone a spell how to just to uh, hurt someone it, it, just knowing that we had that information there in front of us really gave us a sense of power from my experience a child has turned to satanism initially because of an emotional reason we have many more children coming from single parent families or where again there's that anxiety about changing social forces divorce rates like because of no fault divorce becoming a thing um, single family house or single parent households in general for one reason or another. <sighs> Mothers entering the workforce. The, uh, the head of the home, the father, is not taking the fatherly role. With teenagers especially, the appeal is to rebellion. The appeal is to do whatever you can do to drive your parents crazy. They want to supernaturally get back at their parents. And we have found a lot of teenagers wanting to do it that way. The other reason, I believe, is because the church has not met the needs of these teenagers. They have not seen the supernatural power of God in the church. They've not really seen the love of Christ amongst the people. National news. Is she advocating for miracles in church? News coverage brought the demented crimes of self-styled Satanist and serial murder Richard Ramirez into public attention. His crimes included raping a woman in the same bed as the dead body of her husband, whom he had just killed. She then listened helplessly as Ramirez sodomized her eight-year-old son. Ugh. I get that this guy's a monster, but why do they take him seriously when he says that he's a fucking Satanist? He can be... A, lying, or B, mentally ill. Those don't make Satan real or the actual motive for his crimes. <sighs> Beard says, I've actually read through some ancient Greek magical texts. There were basically three categories. Spells, charms that made you more confident, 
spells and charms that made someone fall in love with you, and weirdly spells and charms that make you invisible. I'd really like to know how that turned out for them. While yet another elderly lady had a pentagram carved on her thigh. Ramirez arrogantly brandished secret satanic symbols to the press. He flashed- Are there- are they're not- that's not secret though! Those are symbols that you guys say are satanic! What? Two-fingered devil sign to news reporters. Prominently greeted the court. It doesn't look like someone with a ninth level slot. <laughs> Hail Satan and conspicuously waved the pentagram. Jokes on them. I have over a hundred hit points. And drawn on his palm. You don't understand me. You are not expected to. You are not capable of it. I am beyond your experience. I am beyond good and evil. I will be avenged. Lucifer dwells within us all. That's it. Yeah, if that's not facetious, that just sounds like mental illness. Today, Satanism can be seen to be more blatant than ever before. Satanic graffiti is no longer shocking, while recruiting, which was once hidden and obscure, is now visibly public, and sadly, youth are the chief targets. When Satanists want to recruit, we know that it's been going on for many years, this is not new. But their arrogance and their outwardness about the way they recruit is becoming unbelievable. Recruiters will go out there into various high schools and draw kids into the system because they're very street smart, some of these Satanists. And they can draw these kids into it very seductively where their parents may not even know it. Uh, sometimes they'll simply uh, suck them in through the local high schools, uh, sex and drug parties. Um, you know, they may go to the local uh, bus station, find the runaways down there, skid row, or they may come, come from very affluent families. That no song's going to be stuck in my head now. Down on skid row. That these kids are bored with society. They're bored with school. They're bored with some of the churches that are out there. I have young people calling me regularly, telling me that they have been involved in some sort of animal mutilation sacrifice. And the reason why they say that they go out to these animal mutilation sacrifices is because they're provided with vodka or um <laughs> hey you want to go down to the woods they have alcohol and also we're gonna murder a cat you know there are other places they can get alcohol where they're not murdering animals Rugs, cocaine or free sex and they don't particularly like as this one girl said to me i don't really like to hear the squealing animals in the cemeteries when they do their rituals but they give me free vodka repeatedly <laughs> i think she might have a drinking problem you'll see the drug usage being used sometimes the high priest or the high priestess won't use drugs because they may not be able to have that mental spiritual control over the people that are in the actual coven but they will then give it to their members and so to co um do i cover any pentecostals or other charismatic tradition people i grew up in that and they very much believe in active works of God via prophecy, healing, gifts of tongues. Um, I've seen, we've watched clips from some of that a few times, like uh, uh, snake handling and, and things of that nature, you know. Um, Stone Corbell says, Remember how the Christian God used to demand animal sacrifice? And according to their dogma, still would if Jesus hadn't come and done his thing? No, but you don't understand. God doesn't want it now, so now it's evil. Cover up what I'd see. No. Even though literally the first murder of all time in the bible is committed over someone jealous because god wanted animal sacrifice and he couldn't provide it mm. captain squid says i'm only interested if they're offering a whiskey drink a vodka drink a larger drink and a cider drink as long as that remind you of the bad time and it's time to remind you of the bad time and what i've been oh, taking part oh danny boyd see this is how you all you have to do is remind me of a popular song, and the, the stream is derailed. This is a fatal flaw. In Hannah V2, please remove that bug. <laughs> um, I started taking drugs, which they provided. So that was another reason for staying at the coven. Uh, they were providing me heroin. The old proverb warning against wine, women, and song has taken on new spiritual momentum. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll is the modern cry of a rebellious youth. Satanist Alistair Crowley has indirectly influenced many leading rock groups, including the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and Ozzy Osbourne, who even wrote a song about Crowley. 
Today's music Mr. industry commercializes Crowley. satanic themes with without concern for the souls admit that Satanism sells and that they are simply giving their fans what they want to hear. Many It's an aesthetic that you're actively helping like stigmatize and teenagers want to do things that buck against their parents' social norms because that's part of growing up healthfully is testing boundaries like that. So in the guise of this, it's something that aesthetically is very controversial, but in reality is a pretty inoffensive, you know, it's just music, right? But it has the aesthetic of being very avant-garde, of being very rebellious. So they're into that. That's normal. That's like every teenager ever. Bands get their ideas from horror films. <laughs> you thought I was Hannah 2.0? My brain went to a... Mm, never mind. Medicated person thinks her 27 months. Ooh, sub baby. This sub baby's name is going to be Angela. Angela Demon Face. Films and videos which explicitly depict satanic rituals, death, Angela's the name of that character that was on that box cover that was on screen. Murder and cruel tortures. Evidence shows music laced with satanic overtones has played an important role in the lives of many of the teenagers who have been convicted of satanic killings. Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, obsessed with the music of the rock group ACDC, admitted that their lyrics influenced his mayhem killings. Peer pressure is, is especially important to no, the No, not sleepaway camp. Even more so, we all want to feel accepted. But teenagers oh, like need that camp. stability in their lives of knowing that they are able to carry on relationships. And when the majority of their friends are wearing the heavy metal t-shirts and listening to the black metal music that incorporates satanic lyrics, they feel compelled to belong to the group. I see a lot of them that are getting involved in it. And it started out with the music, you know, not all rock music, mostly the things like the black metal or speed metal type things where they have the heavy satanic type overtones to the music. Your groups such as Venom, uh, Slayer, uh, Merciful Fate, uh, these are bands that will... I like that this shit is like dad rock now. ...will blatantly teach these kids various occultic practices. One of the more popular bands playing in London is a group called The Devoted Men, led by Mark, high priest of the Temple of Olympus. Mark says he receives transmissions from demon gods and goddesses who give him the music and lyrics to perform on stage. I'm sure that's something he genuinely believes and isn't just a part of his stage presence and persona. Very frequently there's otherworldliness about the words themselves. It's almost as if we're not writing the words, but we're just, our hand is performing the action, but it's not our mind. ACDC is hard rock, ACDC is dad rock. The devoted men take the music that we write for the Temple of Olympus and perform it in London at the night spots and venues before a live young audience basically present our message. The band's main function is to recruit new members into the outer circle of Mark's satanic cult. High Priestesses Sarah and Julianne left the cult due to the inner circle's heavy dependence on black magic and perverted sex rituals. The idea of the devoted men, which was the band that they had, was another way to try and get world domination. They thought that by being a successful rock band, that they'd get the money to go to the States and open up an enormous complex religion over there. <laughs> when you first joined the Temple of Olympus, you'd attend an outer circle meeting. And from going along to that, you wouldn't realise what was really going on in the Temple of Olympus at all, because that's only witnessed by the inner order. Um, you'd be offering flowers and wine and 
reading out poetry and everything would be very sweet and very lovely. In Britain, we are seeing from the recruitment programs that we are watching and from the contact magazines that we have, that what is being advertised and what is actually happening in the coven are two different things. We were told to use whitewash liberally and to cover up any signs of any shades of black magic at all that are in the inner order. And there are many other orders who put on this front of being fairly innocent, but actually when the people are involved and initiated, they see that they are being trained into prostitution, in pornography, as well as into Satanism itself as a religion. That doesn't sound like Satanism, that sounds like a cult. I have to urinate, so I'll be right back. Earned. When I was involved in Satanism, we basically recruited from the teenage years, but today it's becoming very apparent that uh, they are trying to get children at a very young age, and this is done partially through the use of the media whether through things like um, cartoons, which begin with, with ideas that there is good magic and there is bad magic, and it's okay if you use the good magic, uh, demonic characters, little demon figurines that kids buy. He-Man isn't a demon. He-Man isn't a demon. And neither are the other people on Eternia. Monsters aren't demons. What are you talking about? He-Man, on, on the cartoon He-Man, you have people um, calling down fire, you have people calling down power into themselves from occult, unseen, hidden sources through uh, talismans and through chanting, and you have these people saying magic words, and then they... Yes, it's fiction. They are empowered and in, endued in, in with power, so that... Wait until this guy hears about the Wizard of Oz. ...child looks at that and says, I want to be powerful. Children are being programmed into occult practices by the cartoons and games and stories that they see on television. It seems harmless and fun and exciting. Games like Dungeons and Dragons incorporate actual occult practices into the body of the game where you are, are actually asked to take on an occult persona that has powers. Believe it or not, uh, you can learn spells right out of Dungeons and Dragons. Describing kids believe. will learn them from the Ouija board. Uh, I have interviewed kids who have played the Ouija board, and the Ouija board literally told them how to draw a five-pointed star and how to do a particular spell. <laughs> when the Ouija board gave Did the spell work? Is the magic in the room with us right now? Reminder! There are many adults who believe in magic as a real thing, that you could say certain words and do certain actions and magic will happen.
incredible. Fucking incredible. Give us that spill. Uh, one of the things it told us to do was to draw a, a pentagram. Uh, and uh, we had to chant a certain chant and... Uh, Stone Corbell says, remember when you got the D&D source book that had actual spell rituals that caused actual things to happen? That was pretty cool. We burned uh, two black candles. Sometimes. If I could cast actual magic, first of all, I would have no compunction about it. Obviously. Second of all, you think I'd be a Twitch streamer? If I could do fucking magic? Killed in themselves. I'd be Ooh, living I out the movie Jumper, but like, good. Have, um played with a Ouija board, believing it to be a bit of fun. They haven't been able to sleep, they've had nightmares, and their lives have been completely changed because of some um, involvement which they thought- Phyllis Filler says magic believing adults who watch sobsets all the time. What was innocent, which they thought was harmless. The, the Ouija board wasn't enough, so we started- The Ouija board told them to spell to find quarters behind each other's ears. Getting into the- I know that one too. A demon must have communicated it to me in my sleep. The, uh, incense book. Or I learned it on a children's TV show when I was six. Books, uh, potions, all kinds of stuff. I went to the school library. I asked for- Next time I hope they teach me a spell where I can take a bite out of a quarter and then spit it back onto it. <laughs> Profane Priestess says, Okay, but are there they any arcane or divine caster? Knowing what their spell list is will help us figure out how best to, <laughs> to see their powers. Nice. Books on the occult, thinking I'd find one or two. There was a whole huge section on the black arts, on witchcraft, on every kind of aspect of the occult that you- I'm sorry you're upset that there were a variety of books on the topic you were interested in reading about? Do you see how that doesn't really make sense? Do you see how that doesn't really jive? One. As I looked, I came across a prayer to Lucifer. Well, I didn't know who Lucifer was because I didn't have a Christian background. You grew up in the United States between the 1950s and the 1990s, and you had never heard the name Lucifer before? You're lying. You are lying. You are a liar who lies. That's a lie. That's literally impossible. But it said if you pray this prayer for a month, then you will get everything that you want and more. Satanism gives you a sense of power. It gives you a feeling that you have power over your you own know, life. You know, YouTube video, I want to let my titties hang out too. It would be more comfortable, but I'm not allowed to do it. So maybe apply some rules to yourself. Thank you. All right, I'm done with this one. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, this one's funny. We'll close off with some of this one. This is Law Enforcement's Guide to Satanic Cults. This one is not actually real. This is a satire that was done by someone. Um from 1994. I believe this is a satire on this kind of video. It is not real, but it is a funny take on it. I'm Gordon Coulter. For many years I served as a law enforcement officer. Today it's my privilege to host this program on a little known area in law enforcement, but important to every small community and every large city across our vast country. It's the area of satanic cults and how they impact our families, our children, and our communities. In satanic occultism, that which is good is bad, and that which is bad is good. And as you view this learning and educational tape, pay attention to notice the reverse of everything that is normal becoming abnormal. There are many crimes that are unsolved in our cities, and many of those crimes have ritualistic overtones, but they're hard to find, and it's difficult to find the, the depth of where these things go and who may have done them. And so today we hope to be able to shed some light on a dark, dark area, an area that has been taboo for so many years, that is also protected by the United States Constitution, 
and the freedom of religion. That's why it's very difficult for us as law enforcement officers to really investigate. But the question really is, where do the freedoms end and our responsibilities begin for our communities? Satanic cults and their various offshoots exist throughout the world. However, a difficulty immediately arises with the word cult. Many cults fall under the protection of the United States Constitution, the freedom of religion. When we talk of cults and Satanism from a law enforcement perspective, we have to tread lightly. That is one of the reasons it is so difficult to investigate Satanic cult activities. We know what the Satanic cult professes to believe. We know what their potential for violence might be if they choose to be true to their belief. We even have evidence, here and there, that leads us to believe that some sort of rituals are taking place. However, unless we catch them actually breaking the law, or find evidence that leads directly to participants in some illegal activity, we have no case. <laughs> the problem involved with the cult explosion is becoming a many-faceted puzzle confronting law enforcement today. Not only is it difficult for us to understand the secret practices of satanic worship, but there are deeper reasons that go beyond mere lust for power and the unlimited drugs and deviant sexual behavior that go with it. Unfortunately... Unlimited drugs? The police investigator attempts... I feel like this is going to come into an issue with like a, like a, like a... Like if I went to an all-you-can-eat cheese buffet... I feel like I'd be stretching the phrase all you can eat. Do they mean all I can eat or all they're willing to serve me? You know what I mean? Careful when you offer unlimited free drugs. ...to analyze these types of crimes with his routine of criminal investigation. Fenekigami says, Watching Doyle yesterday, I was reminded of this line from Shang Tsung's classic tower ending from MK11. Um... Morality will be exposed as the illusion it is, the cunning will prosper, and the good will suffer. In the words of Shang Tsung, have a nice day. <laughs> In the cases of satanic practices involving deviant sexual behavior, the investigator forgets the offense was committed by an abnormal person influenced by many strange and complex motivations. And therefore, law enforcement's analysis of the crime and the criminal must be guided by the principles of abnormal sexology. Oh! I'm pretty sure it's censored. It is imperative that these cases be solved. They are vicious, revolting, and create fear in any community. Men are apprehensive for the safety of their wives, mothers, and daughters, women for their children and themselves. It is only through proper training that the police officer can hope to gain the ability to understand and recognize which are regular offenses and those that belong to cult behaviors. This is a law enforcement problem. Therefore, all law enforcement officers should be familiar with the different types of degeneracy, so they'll be able If kink led to crime, furry cons would be a bloodbath. Have you heard of Rainforest? to associate the type of criminal with the offense committed and to properly charge I just want to hear about the anal the holidays in an intelligent manner Let me find the part of this that has the anal holidays It's corrupt as it's called Here you key of Solomon you will see on the seal of Solomon this word All right from what I can tell um, from the graffiti and everything that I've seen and what I see here on the uh, concrete, it looks like they actually had the ritual here. Now, there's an N here for North. The young people's lives and, and open communication parents and youth, they can be a great help to you. Never, never Anal stop. Anal holy this days? That seems redundant. Investigation into lives but a host of rituals and ceremonies during the course of each year. As some are held more important than others, a host of crimes are committed before, during, and after the ceremonies. On January 7th, the celebration of St. Weinbald is held. 
It is a blood ritual and animal or human sacrifice, including surgical dismemberment, and they're completed with males between the ages of 15 and 33 years of age. Satanic revels are held on January 17th. A sexual type of ritual, anal, oral, and vaginal activities are found with female victims, ranging from 7 to 17 years of age. Candlemas. A high religious holiday is held on February 2nd. At these sexual ceremonies, animal, oral, and vaginal rituals are completed with females from age 1 to 17. February 25th signals Beltane, a blood ceremony. Communions are held with blood filling the chalice. Animal dismemberment and sacrifices are common to this ceremony. They have a lot of holidays back to back. The celebration of St. Icatat is held on March 1st. During the blood ceremony, human blood from devotees of any age and any sex is consumed for strength and as homage to demons. The spring equinox, March 20th, a celebration of orgies, including a are common. April 21st to the 26th is the time of preparation for the grand climax. <laughs> Kidnappings of women, children, and animals are common. Thus, the victims are held as infants and females up to 25 years of age. Infants up to 25 years of age. April 30th, historically, is devoted to coven initiations. June 2nd brings about anti-Christian ceremonies using blessed wafers and blood mixtures for many blasphemous purposes. The irony. June 21st and 22nd signal the summer solstice when orgies, anal, oral, and vaginal in nature take place. Again, this is a lot of anal. It's a lot of anal. All right. I'm done for the day. Jesus Christ. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Tomorrow I'll be back, and we'll probably be doing, um, maybe Sob Sits. Maybe we'll see what Chili's up to, uh, amongst other things. We've been doing a lot of Chili on Sob Sits, so if we do Chili at all, it'll be brief, and we'll cover other stuff. Um. All right. Love you too, Mr. Blast. I'll see the rest of you tomorrow, Monday. I will not be streaming uh, because I'll be in Ohio. So, if you're in Ohio, I'll be in your state on Monday. <laughs> So have a great night, everyone. Um, see you soon. Be cool.